A quick time check, 6 of 45 and a half is our time here on the Morning Brew on this Monday, March the 22nd, 2021. It's been about a year since we closed our borders here in Trinidad and Tobago uh, with regard to the COVID-19 pandemic, trying to safeguard our population uh, from uh, having a spike in COVID cases that our health system could not possibly have dealt with. Uh, one of the first people that we would have spoken with about the COVID-19 disease itself would have been this gentleman, uh, Dr. Christopher Ora, uh, Professor of Vir Virology at the University of West Indies. Good morning to you, Professor. It's great to have you on the show this morning. Good morning, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Professor, let's look at one year on. The conversation about COVID-19 is about um, vaccination. It's about variants and whether the vaccines that are being created will be effective against the variants that we see emerging in different parts of the world. Yes, um, this is one of the really big things that's happened, um, which we're not actually that surprised about because viruses do change. Um, and what happens is uh, because there's been so much uh, replication of the virus uncontrolled around the world, the virus has, 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 has changed and has become, uh, as, is adapting itself uh, to survive in our environment. And what it's done is it's increased in its transmissibility in some cases, so it becomes more able to transmit from person to person. And we're seeing evidence now that it's trying to evade the immune system. And these are the variants that we're seeing around the world. And we have certain variants of concern, um, like the one in the UK, like the one in South Africa, and like the one in Brazil. So we're keeping a very, very close eye on them. Um, but the, the really critical thing for people to understand at the moment is we have produced some very, very safe and very, very effective vaccines. And all evidence at the moment is showing that these vaccines uh, are safe and effective at stopping severe disease and deaths in all, in, with all variants. Um, so the, the, the critical thing is we keep an eye on these variants. We keep a very, very close eye on them because they may still continue to change. But at the moment, the news is still very good. We can rely on uh, our vaccines. And we just heard today another great piece of news out of the USA about the AstraZeneca vaccine and how safe and effective it is um, against the virus. Mm. I think many people are concerned uh, what they would have been hearing with regard to uh, uh, reaction to the vaccine, uh, people developing blood clotting issues um, after they've taken uh, the vaccine. And that's making them think, uh, maybe I should take my chances with COVID rather than with a blood clotting issue that could lead to me having a coronary thrombosis or something else like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I would, I would very much try to allay people's concern over that. We have to be extremely careful with any vaccine. It's a new thing, and as we know, they've appeared for you know, very, uh, they've appeared quickly. But it's been a fantastic achievement. And people that the regulators in Europe, the regulators in the UK, the regulators around the world, who are extremely experienced people, have looked extremely carefully at this particular point about blood clots. Um, um, and some countries have been a little bit more um, uh, uh, careful than others. Um, but what they've found is that there is no link, no link at all between the vaccine and blood clots. I'm afraid blood clots do happen in very rare occurrences in the general population all the time. And so they've looked very carefully in the vaccinated population and the population as a whole, and they found absolutely no link. So people really shouldn't worry about that. Let's look at the issue of the variants because we're seeing three key variants that um, people are concerned with. The one in uh, South Africa, the one in the UK, and the one in Brazil. Uh, we heard that there may be a different one coming out of, of France and there are other uh, minor variants that, that have been popping up. But those are the three main ones. Mm -hmm. And one of the main concerns with regard to the variants is that people may be getting infected so quickly that health systems actually may collapse. And that has been a major concern for many jurisdictions, particularly over the past year or so, Professor Ora, yeah? Absolutely, and in the UK, um, this new, the, the UK variant, which is found to be around 50% more transmissible than the original virus, uh, when it turned up in the UK, it was a real alarm. 
uh, because it was transmitting so much more quickly. And the UK was very worried that they wouldn't be able to hold this virus through, you know, a lockdown and pharma non-pharmaceutical interventions. But it proved uh, over recent over recent months that you can actually still control the, the new highly transmissible variants and stop them circulating or reduce dramatically the circulation through the standard measures that we've been using all the time. So they're not infallible. We can still stop them, but we it is it is more of a challenge. So for Trinidad, of course, uh, one a key thing is to try to stop these variants, to try to stop these new variants from coming into Trinidad, because uh, at the moment there's no evidence that there's any uh, of these variants, and we're still dealing with the original virus in Trinidad. Um, so, th but still we have this virus in Trinidad, and it is circulating, although at low levels. So it is still very, very important we we continue to reduce the spread of that virus. Mm. Uh, Professor, uh, with regard to um, the, the infection rates, though, um, we have managed to suppress our infection rates a, a great deal here in Trinidad and Tobago. Over the past couple of months, we've gone from um, having um, uh, total positive cases from in the 600s down to the 100s. We were seeing uh, double-digit figures uh, not too long ago. We're seeing a slight uptick now. Um, that suppression, though, has come at a cost because many of our people who wanted to come home were not able to come home. Uh, they would have been stuck outside. Uh, there are people who were stuck here who could not really leave. And I, I guess that's a concern that many people in many other jurisdictions would have had because we, we heard about people, even Australians, saying, I want to go home, but I can't go home because of this strict policy that my country has in place. Uh, let's look at that because uh, one or two of the people who are coming home now, who are being repatriated, they're coming home uh, COVID-19 positive, notwithstanding their PCR tests and the fact that they may also be coming with the variants, one or two or more of the variants in their system. Yes, I mean, this is going to be the, the, the issue going forward for all countries is um, what, if you can try and control the, the spread of the virus in, your, in the country like in Trinidad and like Trinidad has done very successfully, you have to then look to your borders and think, how are we going to stop these uh, new variants coming in? So I don't think it is necessarily that the Trinidad borders will have to remain shut, you know, indefinitely into the future. But I think that we'll have to be look very carefully at risk factors. So look at the countries um, where people are coming from and see how much virus is circulating in those countries and how effective is the vaccination program. And once Trinidad has its people vaccinated as well, obviously then the high risk, um, even if the high risk vulnerable people, then they won't be susceptible to the virus. So you're looking at both uh, where the people are coming from and you're looking at Trinidad. And when you assess that risk both ways, and you may well require people to have vaccination, you may well be able to lower, um, to, to allow people to come in with reduced um, quarantine. So I think we w we are looking in the, in the future to have a, a control controlled, as I am obviously not making these decisions, but a, a more controlled opening of the border, but looking very, very carefully at where people are coming from, the risk they have of carrying the virus itself or a new variant, but also making sure that people in Trinidad are vaccinated and safe if a virus does come in. So it's both ways. But I, I think we're looking at, at, at hopefully in the next um, few months, um, that being able to uh, relax a little bit. Mm. Are you, are you, how do you feel about uh, the response to the pandemic here in this country? Uh, how our health system responded, how our uh, government responded uh, when compared with other parts of the world? Will we, will we, uh, will we quick off the draw? Did we make the right decisions? I, I think on the whole, Trinidad did extremely well, has been doing extremely well. So I would commend um, the government. It has been difficult. I agree with the border shutting, and that has been a little bit controversial. But uh, when we started out, and you said 12 months ago, we had these conversations, what I was talking about was I was talking about this thing flattening the curve stopping this virus or slowing this virus so it doesn't inundate so it doesn't abs so, so we don't get to a, a complete um, over, over um, extension of our health systems and that has been done successfully 
you know, we haven't got rid of the virus completely because it, that, that's sometimes a little bit difficult, but maybe possible. But but Trinidad has really done a good job at flattening that curve and needs to continue to flatten that curve. And to flatten that curve, everybody needs to do their bit because it's all about reducing levels of transmission. Mm. We're looking into the future now because um, vaccination is an option. Uh, it's taking us a little while to get our vaccines here in Trinidad and Tobago. So we're gonna have to remain at a high level of vigilance and diligence with regard to observing the protocols, protection protocols. But um, uh, in terms of, of vaccination, um, are we on the right track to get herd immunity by December of this year? Yes, well, cause, cause herd immunity is all about getting a percentage, a high percentage of the people protected. And you, that can be protected either by having the virus or by vaccination. And so in Trinidad, it's going to be vaccination because we haven't had, luckily, we haven't had too many people infected. So it's all about getting that vaccination into people's arms as soon as possible. And when we do that, um, we will uh, we will get that, you know, when we get around 70% of the population vaccinated, uh, we will have that level of herd immunity. Of course, that's herd immunity against the viral strain that we have in Trinidad. The trouble is now, and we have to look outside because if we get new variants coming in, that changes the whole situation. You almost have to sometimes start again a little bit. So, but for the time being, we need to get vaccination inside people's arms and they can then, once people have have the vaccination um, they are protected at least from severe uh, disease and deaths so that's uh, that's the critical thing but in the same at the same time keep an eye on what's going on around the world and mm. try to stop anything new coming in professor Ora, we want to thank you for your time this morning and we look forward to checking in with you as this story continues to develop and uh, we get closer and closer to a rollout a full rollout of our vaccination program here in tnt have a great day thank you and that's it for the first hour of the morning brew. We've got the news coming up next. And on the other side of seven.